Now the South African economy's ability to recover from its longest downward cycle since 1945 has been dealt a blow by new restrictions to curb surging coronavirus infections. The economy entering the 85th month of a weakening cycle in December. That's according to the Reserve Bank's quarterly bulletin. So where do we stand in terms of recovery? Let me bring in a regular contributor to this program, uh, Lumkili Monde, who is an economist and senior lecturer at uh, Wits University. Lumkili, good afternoon to you. Perhaps most frightening in that report from the Reserve Bank was the total gross loan debt increasing by 20.3% year-on-year to 3.7 trillion rand, just over 75% of uh, GDP. Literally, we are swimming in debt. We are swimming in debt, uh, uh, Jeremy. However, we must look at also at the asset base of South Africa. So overall, the asset base uh, is still very, very strong, despite the fact that um, data from TransUnion um, uh, indicates the severity uh, of indebtedness, particularly by household. So I think really, as long as the asset base remains quite robust, I think debt can be contained. More worrying is the loss of jobs. Uh, that's going to be happening now uh, due to the restrictions that were announced by the president on Monday, but also just the severity um, of the impact of COVID lockdown that started in March uh, this year. So I think South Africans are in deeper trouble across many areas, from government finances being weaker, uh, company finances being weaker, and also households. So it's going to be a, a long period um, of, uh, of compression in South Africa in the next two to three years, despite the low interest rate environment that you are in. When we read that uh, foreign direct investment outflows have also diminished uh, 16 and a half billion rand compared to 17 and a half billion rand previously in the previous quarter, what is that telling us, uh, Lumkile Monde, about how the international community is then looking at our prospects? The international community has been very, very interesting uh, because at its base uh, in the US, Europe, and many other economies, they're entering a period of a very low um, interest rate environment where banks uh, and other institutions are going to experience extremely low returns in the medium, in the short to medium term. Therefore, a number of them are looking at yields. That is any sweetener that can improve can improve the returns that they're expecting um, is very attractive. So South Africa, despite the fact that you've been downgraded by many credit rating agencies, there's still an appetite uh, for our paper, particularly uh, in the capital markets, but also even in some of our companies that prove uh, to be return yielding um, in the medium to long term have become very attractive for foreign investors. So what that there's going to be continuous inflow into South Africa as long as the property rights continue being protected. And in that process, therefore, uh, there will be maintenance uh, of some of our capabilities, of some of the companies that are being seen as cheaper, as alternative investment become attractive and foreigners chase yield, particularly in emerging markets, such as South Africa, where the rule of law is still very, very robust. It's not just about property rights, of course. It's also about uh, a guarantee of a regular electricity supply, for instance, and also about uh, some sense that we're getting a grip on uh, graft and corruption. In fact, the fact that South Africa really, in the past quarter, has done an amazing job, particularly its prosecuting authorities, um, with the latest, of course, um, um, arrest of uh, the Secretary General of the ANC and the ongoing Zondo Commission. That indicates, I think, to South Africans, but also to the global community, that South Africa at least seems to be getting right uh, in terms of rule of law, but also in dealing with corruption. However, I think what remains to be seen uh, is to the extent that um, the governing party does uh, what it's supposed to do within its own ranks. Because as long as within its own ranks, uh, President Ramaphosa uh, continues to have those 
that are having suspicion of being involved in craft, particularly the recent one around COVID-19 procurement of protective equipment. I think skepticism is going to continue domestically, but also internationally. So South Africa still has got to do more, even on the energy side, that it's, it's mixture of energy choices. We know that we are procuring about 2.5 um, gigabytes of, uh, of nuclear. How that process plays itself and the transparency and the lack of craft around that is going to remain a question. So I think we're not yet proving ourselves that we're dealing decisively. I think as we continue to taste the pudding, we really get the taste of it and we can come to conclusion about whether we're getting it right. Lumkile Monde, thank you very much indeed from Wits University.